You know, I was just thinking about the kids here a minute ago and just their honesty, right? And how kids are always thinking. And uh, Friday we had our two grandsons, and maybe my daughter and her husband, the kids are watching this morning, but Friday we had the boys and we, uh, we, we picked them up in Grand Haven and uh, brought them back at lunchtime and uh, we were going to stop for lunch. So we uh, stopped for lunch and we were there a couple weeks ago in this restaurant and they have those little candy machines up front. You know, of course, why do they put them right at the door where you walk in, right? But anyway, we gave each one of them a quarter, you know, a couple weeks ago. So we said, hey, we're going back to this restaurant, Mr. Burger, and uh, the new one in Allendale. And um, he, my grand, the oldest one says, do you have quarters for us? And I go, I don't. I said, I have a dollar. I said, I'll get that dollar. And I said, I'll, I'll get four quarters for that dollar. And he goes, so each of us get two? <laughs> no, I need one for Aldi. <laughs> Grandma needs the other one in her car. But anyway, I love the way how kids think. And you know, I think as Christians, we need to be like kids. Always eager to learn. Always thinking. What is God saying? And I wonder about these new Christians in Ephesus, right? For the last several weeks. If you haven't been with us, we've been looking at the book of Ephesians. And um, Paul wrote the letter Um, to these new Christians in in Ephesus. Ephesus was a major seaport town, major harbor on the Aegean Sea, the east side of the Aegean. Today it's modern day Kusadasi in uh, in Turkey. And um, lots and lots of wealth, right? Super wealthy city, lots of commerce, business, industry, the whole bit. They also had a lot of evil. Um, Ephesus was the home uh, for the temple of the goddess Artemis. Artemis was the goddess, really, of, uh, of the earth and animals and, and vegetation and, and so forth. And uh, people who wanted to have babies went there because they felt that Artemis was the goddess of, of birth, right? Of being able to give birth. So Zeus's daughter, right? So I mean, some big names back in, in Greek mythology and the Greek gods. So that's kind of the culture, right? But there's also a lot of evil in there. These are new Christians, right? Paul's letter and his writings, Paul writes this from a prison in Rome, but he writes to these people who are these newer Christians, and um, he's, he's trying to help them in their faith and trying to help them to live. So in chapter 1 of Ephesians, Paul prays for wisdom. Well, that's something that we all should be praying for, right? We talked a little bit about Solomon, and we looked at Proverbs, and uh, it's talked about the book of wisdom, right? How throughout Scripture, even James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask for it, and the Father will give it to you, right? This is the brother of Jesus who says this. Jesus talks about wisdom. Jesus talks about the wise man who built his house on the rock, the foolish person builds his house on the sand, right? So one, Paul calls for wisdom, chapter one. Chapter two, Paul tells them who they were, where they're at, and how they're, new, how they're these new creations. He says, you used to live this way. And he says, you used to be ruled by this evil presence. He says, by the enemy. He says, the, the enemy who's, who's in the air, right? Who lives in the air, this, this, this environment. There's this evil presence, the devil. And he, and he calls them. He's saying, be careful how you live because of this. He says, this is who you used to be. This is who you are. Don't follow the ways of the devil, right? So he's very clear. Pray for wisdom. Stay away from evil. Chapter 3, he says, this good news, this calling you out of this world, calling you into a relationship with Jesus, isn't just for you. He's saying, it's for Jews and Gentiles alike. It's not just for a certain people group. It's for everybody, And when everybody gets together, you know, they're not always in unity, are they? (laughs) You can put everybody in this room and not everybody has the same opinions, right? But he's saying, when it comes to Christ, there needs to be unity. So chapter 4, he calls for this this unity, if you will. Chapter 5, Paul comes back and he says, be careful how you live. And again, he starts looking at the evil that's in the world. Now, These New Testament writers, Paul, for example, to Ephesians, Peter, in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, talks about the enemy. He says, the devil is on the prowl looking to devour, right? These New Testament writers, and I'm kind of sidetracking from Paul, but these New Testament writers realize that there is a presence in the world of evil. And they took that very, very seriously, 
And I think one of the reasons they did that is because these new Christians were coming out of evil when they were converted to Christianity, but that influence of evil was so present that it sort of stays there and, and creeps in and the world speaks so loudly. Is that any different for seasoned Christians? It's not, is it? The latter is just as relevant for us today because evil is just as present. I tend to think sometimes we downplay the presence of the evil in the world and, and we downplay the presence of the enemy working on each one of us. The enemy is real, would you agree? Amen? But we, we can get so caught up that we can sort of, I don't want to say rise over that, but in some ways just kind of maybe even ignore it or write it off as this is just how it is. And these New Testament writers were, be careful, this is real. Don't ignore it, prepare yourself for it. And you get to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at that today. And what Paul looks at, he's, he looks at letters about children and parents and husbands and wives, right? How they should live together, how they should get along together and so forth. And what happens when we try to live God's will is the enemy works all the harder, doesn't he? When we try to do good, the enemy works all the harder. So I love what Paul does in the end of Ephesians, he takes these, these last verses of chapter 6, the end of the book, and he gives them this warning. Let's pray and let's look at it. Father, we thank you again for your words. We thank you for these words of Paul, written so long ago, but so relevant for each of us today. Lord, I pray that we would not just take these in, but that we would have wisdom to process it. That we would look around and realize how real the enemy is. And this morning, Lord, teach us. Teach us how to defend ourselves from the evil schemes of the enemy. We just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10, and it's the whole armor of God. And many of you are familiar with this text. It says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It says, put on, okay, and keep that word there, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but again, the rulers and the authorities, all of these things in the unseen world, again, mighty, beware of this, they, I'm having trouble reading this one this morning. The power in this, in this dark world and against evil. He says the evil spirits that are in the heavenly places. Again, before I go to 13, he's saying, put on, put on. There's this evil in places. Be careful, be alert. Verse 13, he says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to fight, to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground against, uh, stand again with putting on the belt of truth. And he says, and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on you know, the shoes of peace that come from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared in addition to all of these things, put on the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. He says, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers to all believers everywhere. And then he says, and then pray for me too, so that God might give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that in the good news for Jews and Gentiles alike. He says, I'm in chains. He says, I'm in chains now, still preaching this message to God's ambassadors. So I'm God's ambassadors. So pray that I will keep speaking boldly. And I'm going to end there. 
I would love to preach on every piece of the armor, from the belt to the helmet to the shoes to the shield. I'm not going to do that this morning. It would make a great sermon series. But what I want us to take from this message this morning is what Paul is saying in here, after if you look at the whole, I'm just summarizing the whole book, if you will. What Paul is telling these Christians, he's preparing them in chapters 1 through 5 for wisdom, telling them who they were, who they are in Christ, to be united, to be aware of evil. And it's like Paul has had them in boot camp. And today he's sending them out. He's ready to send them out into the world. And he says, put on, put on, put on, so that you may be able to stand. He's reminding them of the enemy and the evil that's in the world. He's telling them how to stay strong. He's saying, put on, put on, put on, so that you might be able to resist, so that you'll be able to stand strong, so that you'll be able to resist that evil when the evil comes. These are Paul's final words. Now, I don't know about you if you've ever been at anybody's side when they give you their final words, but final words are important. Maybe some of you have sat at a bedside or you've seen parents or a loved one who gave you instructions. Final words. Final words are important. Jesus' final words. Paul's letter is much like Jesus. When you go back and you look at the Gospels, we see Jesus' birth, we see Jesus' death, we see Jesus' resurrection, and we get to, like, to the end of Matthew in chapter 28, and Jesus gives marching orders, doesn't he? His final words were, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he reminds them that he's with them to the end of the age. Paul sort of does the same thing. He's saying, this is who you were. Jesus died for you. This is who you are. But be ready for a fight because the world's going to be against you. And what Paul is telling them is, in order to successfully fight the devil and his schemes, this devil who is out to devour, Jesus says, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come to give you life. He's saying, to do that, you need to put on these pieces of armor. You need to put on this helmet to protect your brain. To shield your brain, if you will. To protect your brain from from taking this stuff in. And he's he's praying for wisdom so that when you take this stuff in, you, 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 you you can decipher or discern what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong, what's of good and what's evil. He's saying, put on this shield of protection. Put this filter on, if you will. And he's saying, put on this shield. Put on this shield because the enemy's going to fire darts at you. You need to be able to have those darts reflect. He's saying, put on this belt to gird your loins. To protect yourself, to be able to keep moving. Put on shoes of peace. Be careful where you go. Be careful where you walk. He's saying, arm yourself, get ready, because the enemy is real. Now, I don't know what that means to you. But I get to talk to a lot of people over the course of the week. And I know one of the things the enemy loves to do, including to me, is to to tell us who we not are. Who we aren't. To tell us how we've messed up. To remind us of our mistakes. To, to, to pain and agonize us sometimes where we know we've messed up, where we've hurt people, where we haven't forgiven people. And the enemy wants to tell me that this is good, right? When it's bad. The enemy wants to tell me this is acceptable because the world says it and because the world says I have to go along with this. And yet there's a conflict, isn't there? The enemy's good at creating conflict. Because the Word says, no, this isn't acceptable. These are the Ten Commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments. But we live in a world that says everything's negotiable. That's the enemy. 
And the enemy's going to have us look at things and do things and participate in things that aren't according to God's will. That enemy is real, isn't he? But I just think so often we've, we've just come to accept it. We just come to accept it and say, this is the way it is, and it's not going to change. And I disagree with that. Yes, I agree that that's the way it is, but I don't agree that it, that, that it can't be changed. Is it a battle? Absolutely. But what does Paul say? And he goes, be careful. He's saying, be careful. Put on the armor. And he says, so you can stand strong. What does it mean to stand strong? That's another sermon. Put on the armor so you can stand strong. And he put on all these pieces to get ready to go out and fight. And then what does he say? Pray. Pray. I think that's the best piece of armor. Prayer. Because we've got a God who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. We've got a God who will give us strength. We've got a God who will give us wisdom if we ask for it, don't we? The key is we have to ask for it. I don't know where you're tempted. I don't know which piece of armor you need. But I think we all need to realize the realness of the enemy and how he works on us. As individuals, as families, in our workplace, in our land, even in our churches, huh? How do you summarize a book like Ephesians? And many of you have said, these have been great messages. I, I, I don't know. I'm glad. I would say, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know how they speak to you. But when I read the book of Ephesians, it's like a letter that could have been written today to me, to you. And I guess if I were to summarize it, and there's many pieces that would go under these three things, but I would just, I would just summarize it like this. Paul says, get dressed. Get dressed. What are you dressed in? What are you dressed in? How prepared are you? What does your armor look like, if I may? How are you protecting or defending yourself against the enemy? Let's just call it this. Dress up. Suit up. Suit up and protect yourself. And then stand up. Stand up for what you believe. Know what you believe. Do we really know what we believe? Do we really know what we stand for? Or, 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 or are we willing to negotiate? How convicted of God's word and truth are you? Where do you stand? Paul's really calling for us to examine ourselves. He's saying, pray for this wisdom. Look at who you are and be ready to march. So dress up. Stand up and be strong. You look at the Old Testament, you look at Joshua, be bold, be strong, be courageous for the Lord your God is with you. Dress up, stand up, look up. Look up and pray. Look up and pray. Jesus says, if any of you need something, you should ask. And don't just ask. He says, come seeking. Look for it. And when you still don't find it, he's saying, knock. Beat on the doors of heaven. Dress up, stand up, look up. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words this morning. Thank you for these words of Paul to the church in Ephesus. 
Lord, these are so relevant for us today. Seems so simple, but yet it's, it's so difficult. We live in a world much like their world. We have much, much, much wealth, much, many things, Lord. We live in a, in a time when there's, there's abundance, and uh, yet there's also an abundance of evil. There's evil all around us. Help us to, to, to not only see it, but to protect ourselves from it, to dress up, to suit up with the armor, to stand up and be bold in our faith, and to look up in prayer that you would give us strength to do all things. We just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.